Welcome to another video, you've got Mr. Everything English and I know you guys are in full revision mode. You are learning your quotes, you are learning your techniques, you are learning your analysis and you're trying to predict what is going to come up in the exam. But guys, what if I told you that none of that matters anymore? Because you've got Mr. Everything English and I've got your back. Because I believe that I have created the ultimate essay plan that fits every possible question that they can throw your way. So in this video, guys, let's go over the entire essay plan. Everything education, tuition for maths, English and science. Romeo and Juliet, one essay plan that fits every single question. Let's begin. Guys, so in paragraph one, I chose the famous quote, violent delights have violent ends. And I've used the oxymoron, guys, because something is violent, is disgusting, is nasty, is evil. A delight is something good. So it's that point that violent delights, things that are done on impulse, things that feel good but are not good, have a terrible ending. And that is why my zooming in is the foreshadowing. Because this, this quote foreshadows that whatever you're up to, it might feel good. You might enjoy it. Your love for each other might be amazing. And you might love Romeo and Romeo might love you. But you two, silly little children, are going to ruin the lives of your family. You're going to ruin yourselves. And you're going to ruin the reputation of your entire clan, your entire tribe. Violent delights have terrible endings. As you can see, guys. I don't like Romeo. So please forgive me if that comes out in this video. Now, context, Freud. Guys, Romeo and Juliet, oh my God. These two characters are complete, utter slaves to their id. They are slaves to their desires. They don't care about nobody else. They don't care about their parents. They don't care about their families. They don't care about society. They literally, I would argue, they don't even care about each other. It's more about fulfilling their own desires. And as a result, the violent delights that they, that they experience have terrible consequences for everybody else. That's my first paragraph. Paragraph number two, guys. I defy you stars. Look at Romeo. He thinks he's so bad. I defy you stars. Do you really? Do you really? Because you, my friend, are about to be put in your place. Now, guys, look, I defy you stars. Ignore my sly comments, guys. I defy you stars is juxtaposition because it shows you that Romeo is willing to go against fate. He's willing to go <coughs> against destiny for the sake of his love, for the sake of his Juliet. And it shows you how badly he wants to be with her. Then, guys, this is symbolic because it shows you that in the act of going against fate, in the act of going against destiny, in the act of going against God, what does he call for? You call for a punishment. In every Shakespeare play, do not mess with God because ultimately God is king and God will teach you a lesson. So don't get too ahead of yourself. Uh, number three, guys, I chose the famous quote by Mr. Capulet. I love this quote. I love this quote uh, because it really shows you the. it cuts out all the fat. It's raw. It's a true emotion. When his daughter defies him, Capulet shocked. My little lady, my young lamb, innocent Juliet. I thought if I said jump, she'll say how high. How is she defying me? So what does he say to her? He uses rule of three. He says, hang the young baggage disobedient wretch that's who Juliet truly is the innocent lamb no longer exists and it shows you guys the 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 the, the actual nature of a patriarchal society Capulet can't believe it his daughter is telling him that she is not going to do as he wants and this shows you that in a patriarchal society the daughter belonged to the father. It was an unwritten code. And this defiance completely throws him off. And that is why I will also look at the imperative. Because he's commanding her. He's telling her that this is not going to be tolerated. 
And guys, in my last quote, we use deny thy father and refuse thy name. And I chose this quote, guys, because it comes in the form of a soliloquy. This is when Juliet is revealing her thoughts out loud. And we really get an insight to the true nature. This is early on in the play. And it shows you how she's aware of all these things. She's not innocent. She's aware of family. She's aware of reputation. But it also shows you how Juliet is quite even. Because she's willing or she wants all these things to be sacrificed. For what? For her. She's not oblivious to the consequences. Because she understands that for their love to succeed, they must deny their fathers. Meaning, they must go against their family. And they must refuse their names. Meaning, they must ruin their reputation. She is aware of the consequences of her actions. But she still goes ahead and does it. And guys, for me, the verb here, deny, is very important. It's a complete cutoff. I don't want anything to do with it. Now, guys, in this video, I'm not here to analyze the course in super detail. I'm here to show you guys how these four quotes fit every single possible question on Romeo and Juliet. Let's test this theory, guys. So let's look at the past papers. Guys, let's look at the past papers for Romeo and Juliet. The relationships between the adults and the young people. Guys, this one, violent delights have violent ends. You could talk about how, in this quote, the relationships between the adults and the relationships between the younger generation, there's a big skew. There's a big, big, big skew. The adults, they almost try to maintain the respect of the family. But the younger generation... Everything they do is about themselves. Everything they do is on impulse, it's on emotion. So there's almost a battle. There's like a line that's been drawn in between. The adults and the younger generation don't think alike. The younger generation is all about impulse. It's all about how I feel. And that is why their violent delights end up having violent ends. And you can also link this quote to talk about how the actions of the younger generation ultimately impact the elder generation that's that paragraph done this one guys i defy you stars lovely quote everything that the elder generation have worked for romeo destroys it in this one line he absolutely obliterates it in this one line nothing matters other than himself uh last next one guys hang the young this is an easy one guys okay this is an easy one it shows you societal expectations. There were clear guidelines, there were clear rules, regulations on how the young and the older generation had to behave with one another. So for example, an expectation, an unwritten code was that the younger generation would listen blindly to the elder generation. Juliet was supposed to do what the elders wanted. And this quote shows you what happens when that is broken. And finally, guys, deny thy father and refuse thy name. It shows you the idea of selfishness. That the younger generation are far more selfish than the older generation where everything they do is about them and nobody else. Um, let's apply it to two more, guys. Let's apply it to two more. Oh, guys, these, these, these are honestly quite easy. You've got effect of conflict. Guys, you've got effect of conflict. Conflict is destructive. Uh, conflict makes you abandon religion. Conflict destroys parents and daughters and family relationships. And conflict makes you blind because you can't see what is lust from what is love. Um, next one, next one, next one, next one. Juliet and emotions. Um, Juliet and her emotions. Juliet's emotions are very, very impulsive. Juliet emotions are like a spell that she casts over Romeo um, this one guys Juliet's emotions destroy her family and the last one Juliet's emotion blind her where she can't see uh, anything other than her love that is why she says deny thy father and refuse thy name now I'm saying guys this year what if you get a question about how the characters change how does Romeo change? How does Juliet change? How do both of them change? Um, you might use this quote to talk about how change in these texts is not long lasting. 
It's impulsive. Things happen so quick. It's a violent delight. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an impulsive delight. And it ends so quick. Therefore, change happens far too quick. There's no time to think. There's no time to breathe. This one, guys, I defy you stars. A very good quote to talk about change. Look how much Romeo has changed. It shows you guys that change, sacrifice and change go hand in hand. To change, these characters had to almost sacrifice everything. Then, guys, this one, lovely quote to show how change is difficult. Capulet can't accept, he can't allow for Juliet to change because it goes against the hegemony of a patriarchal society. And the last one, guys, deny thy father and refuse thy name. You could flip it and say in that quote, change is easy. She's talking about, yeah, it's fine. I leave my family, you leave your family, babe, and let's be together. No problem. She talks about change as though it's nothing for her, as long as she gets what she wants. But guys, do you see? These quotes, I argue, if you think about them properly, can be used for lots of different scenarios for possible questions on Romeo and Juliet. Now remember guys, when it comes to your exam, out of these four quotes, you're gonna be using two, because two of these quotes are gonna come up from the extract. So if I was you guys, what I would do is this. First, I would look at this plan and decide out of these four quotes, which ones are the best for you. And you might say, sir, you know what? That one for me works really, really well. That one for me works really, really well. That one, eh, you can do it, but I'm kind of stuck with that. But this one works. So you might take forward these three and you might leave that one. Then what I want you to do is think of as many different possible questions that can come up. How does Juliet change? How does Romeo change? How is love presented? How is family presented? All these different questions. And try to write out the paragraphs. Try to write out these paragraphs, tweaking them to fit the question. And that means, guys, by Monday morning, you should have half of your exam done. Because you should, you should have written out these paragraphs so many times that by the time you get to Monday morning, you're going to take two paragraphs from the extract and the other two paragraphs that you're going to write could be one of these two because these quotes fit lots of different essays. That's the whole point of this video. All right, guys. Good luck for your exams. It's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.